Adolf Hitler and people behind uh, the regime believed that priests were one of the most dangerous groups in the Polish society. One of every two Polish priests were martyred in Dachau. Obóz koncentracyjny to nie jest więzienie, tylko to było miejsce, w którym trzeba wykończyć tych ludzi. To było miejsce egzekucji. I can't even imagine what those priests in Dachau underwent. And yet they turned to the man who was so patient himself as he fulfilled his mission, St. Joseph. Inside the Nazi concentration camp at Dachau, during the darkest chapter of the 20th century, we see one of the most striking examples of St. Joseph's powerful intercession. This little known but remarkable story stands as a sign of hope to the truth that faith and love can overcome even the greatest of evils. In doing the research for my book, Consecration of St. Joseph, I knew that Poland has a great love for St. Joseph. And I had always heard that there was a special shrine dedicated to St. Joseph in Poland, in the town of, of Kalisz. The National Shrine of St. Joseph in Kalisz was created in the 17th century. There's a story of miraculous healing of a local man uh, who lived in the, in the village outside Kalisz. He turned sick and he had a, a vision in his dream. St. Joseph appeared to him and gave him guidance. He has to paint an image of the Holy Family and the Holy Trinity. When a painting was completed and revealed to this man who was sick, he was miraculously healed. And that was the beginning of the shrine in Kalisz. Znana jest Kalisz jako jedno z centrów józefologicznych takich światowych. No i jednym chyba z największych wydarzeń jest wizyta Jana Pawła II tu w Kaliszu. When John Paul II visited Kalisz, he entrusted the family and human life itself in Poland and around the world to St. Joseph. Amidst all the threats of the modern world, St. Joseph stands as the guardian of these two fundamental realities, the family and human life. Ojciec Święty był bardzo wrażliwy na cierpienie. I to się czuło w czasie jego wypowiedzi pobytu w Kaliszu. Modlić się w sanktuarium świętego Józefa jest ono znane w całej Polsce i nawiedzane przez rzesze pielgrzymów. Posiada ono jeszcze szczególną wymowę, która związana jest z ostatnim półwieczem naszej historii. To sanktuarium było i jest często nawiedzane przez kapłanów byłych więźniów obozu koncentracyjnego w Dachau. Church in Poland suffered a lot during the Second World War. We had around 10,000 priests, and during that period of six years, around 2,000 priests were killed. Imagine today if every fifth priest that you know would not be around. 
there were also many more who were imprisoned. And that included priests, religious, also religious sisters, who were persecuted because of their faith. So uh, the loss for the church was tremendous. National Socialism was obsessed with an evil racial ideology. It held that the German people were somehow superior to other races, and that these other races either served them or needed to be eliminated. Of course, this is the opposite of the truth. The Catholic Church insists that every human being, regardless of race, has inviolable dignity, and that comes from being made in the image of God. And from this absolute conviction, about the value of every human life comes the obligation to love and serve our neighbor. This teaching, this insistence on human dignity was a powerful threat to Nazi ideology. So the Nazis felt it had to be eliminated. The priests were leaders of the community and were very patriotic as well. So the Germans, needed to eradicate the priests in Poland. Tworzono już pod koniec 1938 roku tak zwane listy proskrypcyjne, na których umieszczono około 60 tysięcy nazwisk Polaków przeznaczonych do natychmiastowego zlikwidowania. Rozstrzeliwano natychmiast w parafiach, rozstrzeliwano w miasteczkach. Ksiądz Karwaczyński był proboszczem mojego stryja i został przez Niemców aresztowany i w bestialski sposób potraktowany. Tego proboszcza Niemcy przywiązali paskę do roweru i go kilka kilometrów do y, miasteczka obok zaciągnęli. Nie było można spowiadać, nie było można udzielać y, małżeństwa, po prostu wszystko co katolickie znienawidzone przez ideologię nazistowską. Chrześcijaństwo miało być wykorzenione. Boga miało nie być. Niemiecki obóz koncentracyjny w Dachau utworzony został w 1933 roku. Zaraz po dojściu Hitlera do władzy ten obóz miał służyć przede wszystkim likwidacji opozycji, tym, którzy będą zagrażali III Rzeszy. Chodziło o liberałów, monarchistów, komunistów, różne grupy polityczne, ale też później jak tam trafiali obywatele Rzeczypospolitej. They were not treated as human beings, but they were treated as, as numbers. And I think the biggest struggle that the priests and other prisoners had was how to remain a human person and not to turn into a number. Dachau uchodzi, że był pierwszym obozem koncentracyjnym. Dachau, tak jak inne obozy, to był cały szkielet, maszyna taka zorganizowana świetnie pod obozów, które, które służyły III Rzeszy, a wykorzystywano jakby my niewolniczo pracę. Dachau then became the model for the other concentration camps that were built in the occupied territories of Germany. Największa grupa to byli księża katolicy, posługujący w kościele rzymskokatolickim, ale także protestanci i prawosławni, duchowni prawo, prawosławni. Blisko 1900 kapłanów diecezjalnych, zakonnych, diakonów, kleryków, braci zakonnych. Blisko połowa z nich została zamordowana w tym obozie. Także byli poddawani no, takim barbarzyńskim pseudo medycznym eksperymentom, realizowane na potrzeby III Rzeszy. Wurde ich in eine Fliegerkombination bekleidet mit elektrischen Drähten mit zwei Apparaten, die sich auf dem Tisch befanden, verbunden und so in das Wasser hineingeworfen. Ich fühlte sofort eisige Kälte und starken Schüttelfrost. 
Trotz meiner Bitten hat man mich aus dem Wasser nicht herausgenommen. Nachdem verlor ich das Bewusstsein. Wie ich erwachte, lag ich auf einer Tragbare und man schärfte mir nachdrücklich ein, dass ich über dieses Ereignis nicht sprechen darf, weil es ein militärisches Geheimnis sei. Faktycznie to było króliki doświadczalne. Nie chodziło o to, żeby zobaczyć, jak można tych ludzi najlepiej wyleczyć, ale też jak oni umierają, w jaki sposób ta choroba przechodzi swoje etapy. To niewiele przeżyło osób w takie eksperymenty. Nikt więźnia o zgodę nie pytał. W eksperymentach naprawdę zbrodniczych i oni nie widzieli w tym nic złego. Ich tłumaczenie, skoro ten człowiek i tak jest przeznaczony na śmierć, to niech chociaż nauka skorzysta. The Nazi regime had terrible sadistic instincts to torture these people. They would get people to stand, for example, in the winter and have them just standing out there for roll call for hours. And then they would get them to sing German songs. And of course, many of them couldn't sing German songs, and they would be beaten if they couldn't do it. The Nazis had a particular hatred for priests. There was one instance of a priest who was told to take some barbed wire and make a crown of thorns. After he did that, the Nazis placed that crown of thorns on his head and then they required him to go around the camp. As he did so, the prisoners were demanded to mock and spit upon this priest. Despite the torture that they endured daily, these priests kept their focus on Jesus Christ. They sought to pray to him, they tried to imitate him, and they walked with him even as they created a community of faith around them, as they encouraged one another as brothers of Christ. The worst thing that I think was created in this system was to be able to remove the power of forgiveness and to be able to make sure that only the strong of the power of forgiveness will be able to do it. In fact, it was clear. If you will eat the food to the other one, który jest słabszy, współwięźniowy, to przeżyjesz. Przez ludzi robiono bestie, tak? Z głodu, z przepracowania, z już z takiego szaleństwa. Tak ciężko było w obozie przeżyć z kręgosłupem moralnym, prawda? Jakimś utrzymać go. The priests who lived uh, in Dachau, they wanted to uh, be close to, to sacraments what was possible under these circumstances. Priests were provided with the hosts and the wine. Small amounts, but still, it was made available to them so that they can close the sacraments. There was a chapel in the camp, which is really unusual when you look at different camps. These priests who were still allowed to say the Mass, they would take the crumbs from the uh, Eucharist and we'll share that with the, with, with the Polish priests. Eucharystia, do pewnego momentu mogli odprawiać skaplicy niemieckie, księży. Gdy nie mogli, to zawsze po kryjomu gdzieś odprawiali Eucharystię. Władze im odebrały tak zwanej przywilej kaplicy. Wszyscy księża z innych krajów mieli dostęp, oni nie mieli tego dostępu. No to jest charakterystyczne, że, że księża się nie poddali, a wręcz przeciwnie, no nieśli posługę sakramentalną wzajemnie sobie, ale także więźniom potrzebującym. Komunia święta dostarczona w jakichś małych pudełeczkach, po, po aspirynie czy lekarstwach, gdzieś przemycana. Oczywiście to było wszystko z wrażeniem życia. These priests showed tremendous courage despite being tortured, despite their ailing bodies, showed such a great interior strength. 
That's the edifying focus that these priests had, even in the hellhole of Dachau. They kept their focus on Jesus Christ. My grandfather was in the concentration camp um, for many years. He died when I was nine. I remember a number that was tattooed on his forearm. He arrived in Auschwitz in July of 1941. My grandfather was present when Maximilian Kolbe stood up and offered his life. He stayed there until November 44. He arrived in Dachau two days before these priests and lay people entrusted themselves to St. Joseph. Starting in April 1945, the priests who were in the camp could hear uh, the bombardment of Munich. There was this sense that Germany may uh, lose the war. But at the same time, they had a sense that, well, Germans will not let them leave alive. They knew that the armies that were fighting the Germans were getting closer. You know, people were getting very, very anxious. There was a rumor, and it did happen at different camps, that the SS and other personnel were going to execute everyone in the camp. St. Joseph is seen as a protector for the Polish nation and the Polish Catholic Church, and seen as a person that they could turn to. And they were looking for ways to deal with the situation in a spiritual way. They began the novena on April 14, 1945. They chose St. Joseph of Kalish as the patron of the entrustment. In the New Testament, you know, Herod wanted to kill the Christ child, and yet the divine child was placed into the care of St. Joseph, and he literally saved him from Herod, from, from this massacre. Well, the priests, knowing that, they thought, well, we need to go to St. Joseph too. He has power in heaven to intercede for us. That day, during two masses, over 800 people, priests and lay people, uh, consecrate themselves to St. Joseph. So they said, we are there, we, we succumb to you, be our defender. They made a promise that they will go to St. Joseph in Kalish on a pilgrimage of Thanksgiving. The second thing that they promised that they will defend and promote the values of family in Poland, in our nation, after the war. Niemcy zobaczyli, że mogą przegrać wojnę. Żeby nie dać śladu tego, co się działo w Dachau, oni postanowili zagładzić wszystkich więźniów i świeckich, i kapłanów. What's amazing is that they found out later on that same day. Heinrich Himmler signed an order that no prisoner will be able to leave the camp alive. Wyzwolenie nastąpiło o godzinie 17:25, a obóz spalony miał być o godzinie 21:00. 33,000 więźniów miało być wszystkim spalonych. On the day of liberation of Dachau, there was a great deal of chaos. The SS men were trying to find a means of escape. The priests themselves, if they hear troops and other things going on outside. They were having masses regularly one after the other, 
This was a powerful, powerful image, praying as shots are being fired and as chaos. Cały obóz został został właśnie wyzwolony i to godziny przed planowanym zniszczeniem obozu. Wszyscy uznali później za za cud świętego Józefa. Można tak powiedzieć, że to jest największy cud XX wieku świętego Józefa. Someone once said that joy is the echo of God's presence, but truly for these priests who were liberated, they understood joy is indeed the presence of God. We can imagine their tears of joy and gratitude. They had just finished a novena to St. Joseph, and now they were liberated. They realized that it was St. Joseph who helped them. I imagine that when the Allies liberated Dachau, they saw people who looked like the walking dead. And yet, there must have been something victorious about these prisoners. They were victorious because they had continued to keep the faith and they had continued to love. Love had the final word. Pan Bóg nie zostawia nas nigdy. Pan Bóg jest z nami. Czasami nie rozumiemy Jego planów, ale jest z nami, bo Mu na nas zależy, ale też jest Bogiem, który, który jest Panem historii. I w sytuacjach, w których wydawało się, że, że wszystko idzie ku tragicznemu końcowi, Pan Bóg objawił swoją łaskę, swoją dobroć, ale także swoją moc że może wyswobodzić człowieka z takiego doświadczenia. It seemed by many leaders, including Pope John Paul II, that this was a miracle, that they were not killed. So in Polish spirituality and the Polish nation, Polish Catholicism, this story takes on a new meaning because it is a sign of um, salvation of God interceding in humanity in the world. As part of their promises to St. Joseph, they said that they will travel to Kalish, to the shrine of St. Joseph as a sign of thanksgiving. The first official pilgrimage to Kalish happened in 1948. They travel there to thank God for their survival, to pray for those who perished, who gave up their life. Stry opowiadał, że on swoje ocalenie zawdzięcza świętemu Józefowi. Dlatego po wojnie zawsze starał się być brać udział we wszystkich pielgrzymkach tutaj do sanktuarium świętego Józefa w Kaliszu. Ja miałam kilkakrotnie tę przyjemność być z nim, widzieć, jaki on jest szczęśliwy, że on jest tutaj, że on może tutaj na kolanach podziękować właśnie świętemu Józefowi za ocalenie. czasie i miejscu modlicie się dzisiaj razem z nami, wspominając księży Dachowczyków. Niech ono będzie dla nas umocnieniem na to, co się dzisiaj z nami dzieje. Niech będzie takim przypomnieniem o korzeniach naszych. Niech będzie wyrazem naszego szacunku wobec tych, którzy służyli Chrystusowi w kapłaństwie, a którzy w imię wierności Jezusowi musieli złożyć najwyższą ofiarę. St. Joseph is the sure patron 
uh, that we can turn to in the most difficult situations. The clergy wants to continue that tradition uh, to inspire future generations. So these pilgrimages were a tremendous support and help to grow the devotion to St. Joseph throughout the country. Besides the annual pilgrimage, the priest prisoners in Dachau made another promise to St. Joseph during their consecration. They promised that they would carry out a new work of mercy in his name. That's why on the 30th anniversary of their liberation, the Institute for Studies on the Family was founded in Warsaw. Archbishop Kazimierz Majdanski, one of the Dachau prisoners, founded the Institute, which aims to protect and strengthen the family. I can't imagine a more fitting initiative to entrust to St. Joseph, the protector of the Holy Family. The work of this institute is one of the many ways that the witness of those priest prisoners echoes even to this very day. I am certain that my grandfather was saved by St. Joseph. And if he had not survived, I wouldn't be here. The story of my grandfather, liberated from the camp, really made me think, what is it that God wants to say to my family? St. Joseph is the example for all of us, how to be a husband, a father, in today's world. He sacrificed his will. St. Joseph was willing to give up his plans. He gave himself as a gift to Mary. He gave himself as a gift to Jesus. And, and that's something that this uh, model for me, the sacrifice will lead me to a self-gift. And that's how my vocation can be fully fulfilled. You know, we're probably not gonna be in a concentration camp in all likelihood, but we all have our own prisons. Everybody's carrying a cross. And I think the importance of the witness of these priests is that all of us can have the confidence to go to St. Joseph and to have that extreme confidence and trust in him because he is such a powerful intercessor in heaven. When he asks Jesus for something, Jesus is hearing it as coming from his father. And that's a witness for all of us. Even though World War II is over, all of those priests are now deceased, their legacy of going to St. Joseph remains and it will remain till the end of time.